Praise God. Praise Lord. If I may bear borrow something from our praise team, this is a great thing. Amen. Amen. And we're looking forward to God doing great things in our lives to yes. touch us, to make us well, make us whole, yes. and just yes. to put prosperity in our lives. Yes. Welcome to Lighthouse Christian Center Sunday morning worship service. We welcome you, welcome you, and we praise God for you. This morning we're going to read from the King James Version of the Bible, the book of Acts, chapter 2, starting at verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them cloven towns, like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. And when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded. Because that every man speak them heard stop it. Because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not these which are speak Galileans? And how have we every man in his own town wherein we were born? Let's pray. Father God, we thank you. And we praise your holy name, dear Father. We thank you for this day, dear Lord. We thank you for the hour in which we stand, dear Lord, and proclaim your gospel to men everywhere, dear Lord. Those that are on the sound of our worship service, our praise, our words today, dear Lord, let it touch your heart, dear Father, and let them know that you are a great God that you will touch their lives, that you will lift them up, their Father. That will give them, Lord, the things that they need, their Father, in this dying world, their Lord. Let us move, their Father, Father, by your power, by your grace, their Lord. And we shall thank you for this day, for all that you will do right here, right now. That your glory, their Father, will be shown to men and women everywhere. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen and amen. We thank you, praise God. Let us welcome back our praise team so that they can sing songs of praise to touch your heart. Amen. Amen. Good morning, good morning again, White House Christian Center. We welcome you to the praise and worship portion.
for everything that he's done for us. Amen. And we give him praise today. We give him honor. We give him glory. The Bible says, let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. So we lift our voice today. We thank God to be in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. The song says we were created to make his name great. Yes.
This is my body which is broken for you. Broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. So let's prepare our hearts and our minds as we reflect upon the sacrifice that Jesus made and as we receive the Lord's Supper. Thank you for dying. No one else would do it, but you did. 
And we praise you. We thank you for it. Your word declares that this is the cup of blessing. We receive that blessing by faith. Forgiveness of sins, cleansing our conscience from dead works. Healing to our physical bodies. Yes. We thank you. We bless you. We praise you for all the wonderful, precious promises that you've given us. All the benefits that you've loaded us daily with. We bless you. And we praise you. And because you gave your life, we turn to give our lives to you. A living sacrifice. We declare like the Apostle Paul, we too are crucified with you. Nevertheless, it's not I who live, but you who live on the inside of us. And we thank you for that. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Somebody say amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's go ahead and prepare ourselves as we have Sister Brown come up and let us know about a few announcements. Bless the name. Let's give God praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Once again, Amen. Lighthouse Amen. Christian Center, we want to welcome you to our Sunday morning service. We thank God that you are here. We thank God that you're viewing online. And you took time to spend with us in the Lord yes. this morning. Amen. 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 Yes. We do have a few announcements. As Pastor Graham said, that we want to make you aware of this morning. Yes. As always, there are CD and digital downloads available of today's message for your purchase of $5. Um, you see Brother Brown at the back table and see orders take a week and digital downloads are available pretty much immediately if we have a valid email address. Also, uh, Lighthouse Christian Center Virtual Bible Study is this Wednesday at 7 p.m. You can log on to the Bible Study on Zoom through a link that we provide, send out every week, or call in by phone. Our Wednesday Bible study is now streamed also live over YouTube, so you can join in that way virtually. We would love to have you join us this Wednesday at 7 p.m. We do want to mention to you that last Sunday we read the testimony of the young lady that we provided a scholarship to, um, and she is successfully completing an internship this summer. Um, at the state capitol. So we thank God for her. We thank God that we're able to be a blessing in the young people's lives so that they continue to do great things. Amen. We ask that you join us on Sunday, June 25th, as we honor our sixth high school graduate with a small academic scholarship. Yes, that's the word. We ask that you are um, here and present in the uh, Fort Dorchester Auditorium today, I mean, Sunday, the 25th, for our service. Um, as we recognize a Fort Dorchester student, so it's going to be a student from this very high school where we have our service every week, um, who will be the recipient of that scholarship. And if you want to contribute financially to the scholarship, you can add it to your offering envelope or you can give online. So uh, be sure that you let us know the amount that you would like to pay for the scholarship. And we thank you in advance for your contribution um, and just to be a blessing in that young child's life, we are going to be presenting the scholarship award to you on June 25th. Amen. Amen. Any first time visitors, we welcome you to LCC. We ask that you fill out a visitor's card and drop it in the offering basket. Be sure to pick up your free gift before leaving today. And any virtual visitors, uh, please go to the website www.lighthousefc.org and click on the contact tab so that we can connect with you as well. And we thank you to those who have already given online. There are several ways to give. We can give in person or Cash App or Zelle or through the website at www.lighthousesc.org forward slash donate. And now it is time to give. We're going to give you a moment to get your offering envelope together. If you need one of those, please raise your hand. And one will be provided for you. Today's offering scripture is coming from Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse 10, and this is the New International Version. Give generously to them and do so without a grudging heart. Then because of this, the Lord your God will bless you in all your work and in everything you put your hands to. We thank God for him. We thank God for his son Jesus and everything that he provides for us every single day. We'll have a song. 
as you prepare your offering envelope. He's worthy to be praised today. I told y'all that was the theme today. Amen. <laughs> I'm praising. This is truly worthy. today. We worship you with it. We give our whole selves to you. Lord, take it now and use it for your kingdom and your glory. Multiply it and reach its influence as we pray. May it be a great blessing to many, Lord. We ask all these things in the powerful name of Jesus. Everyone say amen. 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 And we amen. bless the Lord. We welcome praise and worship back to the stage for a special amen. musical selection. Thank God. We know that He's a great God. Oh, how many know there's a difference between good and great? Hallelujah. We can say, Oh, yeah, that's good. But when we say that's great, we know that's something bad. We bless the name of the Lord. Lift your voice. We can expect great things.
expecting yes. great, great things. Yes. Amen. I don't know about you, but that is my testimony. That is my confession. I'm expecting great things. I believe the Bible calls that hope. Amen. Yes, we sir. have that hope yes, that does not disappoint in our God. Well, praise God again. We thank you for worshiping and joining us this wonderful Sunday morning. We, Karen, I had a busy week. Matter of yes. fact, she was on. We may have to both go to a funeral today. Have an early morning funeral on her side of the family. There was um, her uh, grand, her aunt's, I should say, aunt's husband passed away. He was a minister of the gospel. Awesome. You know, uh, uh, you know, she got a lot of preachers on her side as well. And um, we've been praying for them. He went to be with the Lord this, this past week uh, in his home. It was amazing uh, that the chaplain was by. He was in hospice care. And uh, the chaplain was by a couple family members. And at the house, they started to have a service. They started singing and praising and worshiping God. And, you know, the chaplain was leading songs for him. And his wife, his wife is on hospice as well, and went to visit them the other day. And right in the middle of worshiping, they said he went to be with the Lord. He was right there in the middle of praising God, in the middle of singing worship songs to the Lord. He went to be with the Lord right there at his home. And so um, keep pray for them, that family. And, um, you know, it's, you used to never know. I was sharing with them uh, a couple of folks, well, actually the Browns, earlier today. We had a, a former classmate who was before us. He was in the hospital. and. and you know, we, you know, they were soliciting us to pray for them, our old coach, and, and so we have to keep people lifted up in prayer, yes. families as well. You know, things are going on all the time, and so and when things like this happen, you realize how much uh, each day is a gift, and how yes. life is a gift, yes. and we're grateful not only to be alive but also to uh, be a beloved son and daughter of God. So. We probably will rush out and go uh, see that family if I'm able to. Got a couple things to do, but uh, for now let's get to the Word of God. We want to begin a new series uh, today. Don't believe I'll be before you long. Of course, when I say that, usually it turns out the other way. But I, I really don't believe I'll be before you long today. Uh, but we're going to be in Galatians chapter five, uh, yeah. verses twenty-two through twenty-four. Uh, you received the online newsletter. It is online, not a hard copy. Uh, you know that we're beginning a series on the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit, so we'll see if we can dive into this. There's so much to be said about uh, this passage. It's very familiar, but I think it's relevant for us today, and I think it's very important for every child of God that we understand uh, about the importance of demonstrating the fruit of the Spirit. Uh, before we read the Scripture, let's go ahead and pray. Father, again, we bless you. We honor you. Thank you for everything that has been said and done. We thank you for your precious Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord, and we declare that you are an amazing God. You do great things. We praise you over and over again because you're worthy of all of our praise. And so, Father, as we continue with this service, we pray that lives will be changed forever. Those who are present, those who will, will view online, that you will touch them, heal them, deliver them, and set them free. We, we lift up the family of Sean Williams right now in the name of Jesus. That you be right there with him in the hospital as he goes through challenges in his body. We pray for his entire family, him as well. That you you be, you allow your healing power to, to work in his life. And so, God, we thank you even for the family of those who lost a uh, general in the faith, uh, a man of God, uh, uh, a warrior in the kingdom. That you comfort that family as well as they mourn and as they grieve. And so for all of these things, we give you praise, we give you the honor, and we give you all of the glory. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. All right, so let me take my time here. Uh, Galatians chapter 5. Galatians, the fifth chapter. And we're going to focus our attention on verses 22 through 24. I'm using as a subject the fruit-bearing Christian. Fruit-bearing Christian. And... Um, in verse 22, I'm reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against us there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. And so once again, our subject is entitled Fruit-Bearing Christian." 
So I remember years ago in the field of education, they, they, they pivoted a little bit to include what they call character education. So the goal was they just didn't want to teach kids about how to read, write, and do arithmetic. They wanted to make sure that they were also producing good citizens. They wanted to teach them about the importance of character, you know, being kind, you know, having a sense of right and wrong, morality. And so what they did from that point is they uh, started to weave in the curriculum ways to also teach and model character. Very good. Okay, obviously parents, we should be doing this, but they said we want to put it or make it part of our curriculum as well. And I thought it was a very good idea. I remember going through um, undergrad and they talked about this concept. But really when you think about it, I believe the church should be the exact same way. You know, our goal isn't just for people to, you know, have a good time, run and shout. But at the end of the day, as Christians, as churches, uh, we want to produce people of character. Yes. That's really what the gospel, I believe, is about. And that's what this verse is about. Paul, he's talking to and writing to the church at Galatia. He talks to them about this important thing and why this is something that should be seen in all of our lives. Now, now keep in mind the word fruit, we know what it is, but it's used here as a metaphor to describe character traits that every believer should strive for. These are the most desirable character traits for every single believer. And so he uses this to give you a picture of what it should look like. It's obviously as a seed and an ovary matures, it grows into fruit. And so in a similar sense, as we mature in the faith, there should be certain character traits that we display. Obviously, we know that being a Christian, being born again, isn't just punching your clock at church every Sunday. It's not about holding a position in church, having a title, or anything of that nature. It's not just about wearing a cross around your neck, having a Jesus bumper sticker, or being a Christian in name only. At the end of the day, if we're growing, if we're maturing in Christ, there should be certain traits. And Paul calls this fruit. And so we should be fruit-bearing Christians, every one of us, as children of God. And so there's several things in this passage that Paul highlights here, and he talks about what I believe are important facts about being a fruit-bearing Christian. Now, if I can digress, you do remember that Jesus used this language in the gospel as well. I can recall, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but he was talking about uh, with his disciples false prophets, how on the outside it looked real good, but on the inside they're like wolves. And he said, don't worry about it, even though they have a position. Even though they have a title, even though they're in a role, even though they are called to be a prophet, he said, don't worry about it, you know them about their fruit. In other words, the telltale sign that they really belong to me, the telltale sign that they're really mature in Christ isn't the fact that they prophesy, isn't because they are considered a church leader. No, he says, you'll know them by their fruit. In other words, Jesus said, one of the most important things you need to look for in a, a bona fide believer are traits that represent the character of God. Christian conduct. He, he, he tells us what it is. He said, love, joy, peace, long suffering. Amen? Amen. Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So in this passage, he says, but the fruit of the Spirit. He talks about these traits. And so because he highlights and he lists and uses this metaphor to describe what we should be displaying, that tells us that God expects every single believer to bear fruit. Yes. Every one of us. We should be growing. In other words, there should be evidence that we are growing and we're mature in Christ. So that means as a believer, if I come to church and I'm still mean, I'm still nasty, I still have a short fuse versus a long fuse. If, if I tell people off, if I'm hopping in and out of bed with everybody and anybody, if I have no self-control, if I don't display the joy of the Lord, that is proof in itself. No matter what we tell people, and I say we, amen, there should be some evidence. There should be fruit seen in our lives. We should be able to see all of these traits. If I'm still lying, if I'm still jealous, if I'm still stealing or dishonest or patient, impatient, as I said before, if I'm not as faithful to God as I need to be, if I'm inconsistent, he said, this is not something that should be seen. We should see these traits if we're going in Christ. God expects all of us 
to bear fruit. Again, we do know that titles don't mean much to God. He's interested in our fruit. Yes. Now, farmers, they, they understand this because if they plant a seed, yes. they expect to see fruit. Yes. You know, they, they, they expect to see some growth. Yes. If not, they think something is wrong. They think something may be wrong with the seed. They think something may be wrong with the ground. Maybe the weather condition or they didn't fertilize it properly. They, they ask themselves what can be wrong because the expectation is that they, it will bear fruit. And similarly, God feels the same way about us. If we claim to be saved, if we say we're a son and daughter of God, God expects us to demonstrate these traits. He wants us to be a fruit bearing Christian. Again, Jesus said, you know them by their fruit, not their title. Not their position. Not, not because of the level of volume they have in church. Not, not by how good they preach or how good they say. You, say. you know them by the traits that you see. And let me tell you, fruit don't lie. Yes. Oh yeah, fruit don't lie. You can talk a good game, but if you don't display love, peace, joy, all of these traits, hey, your, our, our, our lives will tell on us. Yes. Everyone will know. Like Jesus said with the, the, the false prophet, he said, don't even pay attention to that. He said, you know them by their fruit. Come on. People can tell, absolutely. Our friends, those are in a circle. Your spouse, your children, they know if you're a bona fide Christian. Yes. They may not tell you to your face that, that you sometime me, but they can tell by the life we live. That's why Jesus said, Paul actually said, we should be living epistles, letters. Read, know them all men. In other words, they should be able to, particularly or especially the lost, see our good works, our godly character, our godly conduct, and glorify the Father in heaven. That's what it means to be a fruit bearing Christian. So he says, the fruit of the Spirit. God expects believers to bear fruit. Also, we see that fruit is a sign of spiritual life. If you look at a tree, you see no fruit, that is an indication that it has no life in it. The tree is dying. No life at all. Many of you can recall the parable that Jesus talked about with the tree and the vine. He said, I'm the vine, you are the branches. And so he supplies life to the branches, all of us. And so the expectation is that if we're connected to the vine, we should be bearing fruit. And so fruit is a sign of natural life. Fruit is also a sign of spiritual life as well. I found there are a lot of people in church uh, who come to church per se, sometimes even in the ministry, but you can tell they're spiritually dead. Okay, they're spiritually dead. Now that doesn't sound, you know, it sounds harsh, unpopular, but but I didn't say it, God said it. Fruit is a sign of life. And so if we are spiritually alive, this should be fruit. No one argues about a tree that has no fruit. That is not alive, it's dead or it's dying. And so in a similar sense, if there are is no fruit in our life, that is a sign there's no spiritual life. In other words, we've disconnected ourselves from God, the true vine. That also means that the life of God isn't flowing through us. We have essentially broken fellowship with God some way or another or some way down the line. Now again, uh, and I put it uh, from the pulpit to the back of the pew, if, if even where we're coming to church, doing quote-unquote religious things, if, if we're not connected, if there's no spiritual life in us, it's going to show because fruit is a sign of spiritual life. If I'm connected to God, if I'm, if I'm fellowshipping with God, if I'm spending time with God, if I have a real prayer life, if I'm digging in the Word of God, if I am a workman and studying God's Word, if, if I have a real, intimate relationship with God, His life is flowing through me. And so if there is spiritual life, there should be fruit. Spiritual life means you have a strong, vibrant relationship with God. And I will tell you, that God, Jesus, particularly, especially, specifically here on earth, he discouraged those who did not bear fruit. Remember, he said, those who didn't bear fruit, he said, I cast it into the fire. And so if, if I'm spiritually alive, again, it has nothing to do with my time. It has nothing, has nothing to do with me standing up Sunday after Sunday preaching a sermon. It has nothing to do with that. Yes. This is a job. This is a task. This is a role. I'm yes. serving. Yes. That's all it is. When I leave here, I gotta live. Yes. 
When I leave here, I have to bear fruit. If I'm really, because I'm telling you, you have people who, who come to church out of duty. They, they, they hold a position as a pastor or leader out of duty. Yet when they go home, there's no fruit. And then the people around us, we send mixed signals. We claim to be a Christian. We claim to be a person who's dedicated to church. Come on, sir. But these traits, these traits are there. Yes. And so he says, this is what, this is the sign. This is, the, this is how you really, you really know that there's spiritual life. He said, you, you got to display love, joy. You, got, you have to be peaceful, not argumentative. Ar argumentative. Okay, can't get no help with that. Long, you got to suffer along with people. You have to be patient with people. Yes. Not saying it's easy, praise God. Yes, you got to be kind. Now, again, even the people who are unkind to you, if, if there's spiritual life in you, keep in mind, we're going to get to this. This is something supernatural that takes place. I'm getting ahead of myself, but I'm not telling you just, just to try hard to display these traits. I'm not just telling you to have a strong will. I'm telling you that the Bible says that when the Holy Spirit is working in your life, when you have a real relationship with God, when you have spiritual life flowing through you, when you have true fellowship with God, your life has to change. And so, when we do so, you see these things clearly in our life. All of these desirable traits, all of these characteristics, all of these attributes should be there. It's a sign of spiritual life. So once again, he says the fruit of the Spirit. Fruit is a metaphor of the Holy Spirit. God expects us to be a fruit. He's talking to people who are born of the Spirit. Fruit is a sign of spiritual life. That's why we should be a fruit-bearing Christian. Fruit bearing Christian also means that the Holy Spirit, somebody say Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, He enables us to bear fruit. Again, He says the fruit of the Spirit. Keep in mind, Paul is using this to contrast something he talked about in the verses prior to verse 22. He contrasted it with the works of the flesh. So you got two choices as a believer. Someone who's already saved, you can give it to the gratification of your flesh. And he gave you the traits that you would have. You can read that for yourself on your own time. But then he says, once you live a life under the control of the Holy Spirit, now this is what you will see in your life. So the Holy Spirit is there to help us. He's literally called our helper, strengthener. He enables us to bear fruit. That's how we become a fruit-bearing Christian. We, we can't discuss it without talking about the role of the Holy Spirit in the life of a child of God. If I can digress, a lot of churches, we, we've ignored the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we've, we've uh, just through our doctrine and theology, we've, we've, we've discounted what he really means to us and for us. And so we need the Holy Spirit. And when someone is really, hear me now, if someone is really full of the Spirit, you'll see all these traits. You'll see fruit in their life. Now, when I thought about this, and I'm almost done, I thought that now we have to have the discussion again of what it really means to be filled with the Spirit. Because a lot of times we think it's, it's, it's a lot of external things per se. It's just speaking in tongues. I told you before this, I'm all about that. And let me tell you this, there are a lot of uh, denominations and, and, and pastors who don't have a charismatic or Pentecostal background. They've embraced the importance of speaking in other tongues, having a prayer language. I do it myself, full disclosure. But I'm here to tell you being full of the Spirit is more than speaking in other tongues. It's more than just prophecy, word of wisdom, word of knowledge. It has to be. Because Jesus said, someone who stands in the office of a prophet, he says, on the inside, they're like wolves. You won't know them by their office. You won't know them by their title, by their role in the church. He said, you'll know them by their fruit. And so, when I, when I wrap my head around this, I found that if someone is really full of the Holy Spirit, you see these traits in their life, it will be seen in their character. Yes. You see someone who is forever faithful, consistent, faithful to God. You see people who have a long track record of staying loyal to God. You see people who have a real love law. That's how I know sometimes, hear me now, even those in the ministry can't be full of the Spirit. You speak in tongues in English, you, you speak in tongues, and then you lie or cuss somebody out in English. <laughs> Gotta be more than just gifts. Yes. Gotta be more than demonstration. Jesus even said, 
Many, many, many will come to me in that day and say, hey, because I was full of the Spirit, I prophesied in your name. I laid hands on the sick. That's a sign of someone being full of the Spirit. He's having all these things. In your name, I laid hands on the sick. Signs and wonders were there. And Jesus said, and this verse scares me. Boy, oh, I never do you. I said, I never do you. So to me, as I kind of, you know, try to make sense of this, oh my God, if, if, I'm, if I'm really full of the Spirit, it's about my character. I know. I know. See, it's about my character. Hey, I know how good I can preach, sing, prophesy with accuracy. It's not how hard and fast I can speak in other tongues. Well, all that's good. There's, there's value in that. There's value in having a prayer language there's, that you can edify you. So build yourself up on your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Ghost. But additionally, he said, you got to show fruit. you got to be a fruit-bearing Christian. If I'm really full of the Spirit, i got to have a strong love walk. I need to be peaceful. Hey, it got to be easy to get along with. Some of us people, this we hard to get along with. Yes, sir. Come on. Got to have joy. Yes. Come on, parents. We got to learn how to suffer along with our children. Come on. Yes, sir. Got to be patient yes. with our children. Man, I'm telling you, you talk about needing the Holy Ghost. Yes. <laughs> You talk about needing the fruit of the Spirit. You know, I thought about it when I was we were going over the content for the newsletter. So the said, Pastor Graham, what do you want to talk about? I said, I don't know. I kind of have an idea. But one thing I will say, the fruit of the Spirit isn't just for church. Having the fruit of the Spirit is for life. It's for marriage. It's for the job when you got co-workers. Supervisors will get on you. Not your first nerve, but your last nerve. It's for when people cut you off on the highway. That's when you need the fruit of the Spirit. See, we, we, we look, it's kind of easy now. Wait till you hit the door. Come on. You mess around on your way home yes, sir. from church with your spouse, you get an argument or disagreement. <laughs> you better be peaceful. You better have to be a peacemaker. Maybe. So, yeah, you, you need these traits. You need to display goodness, kindness, Hallelujah. love the unlovable. I don't believe you can say you're full of the spirit or fruit being Christian. If you're not consistent, if you're not faithful, Hallelujah. you hear one Sunday, next Sunday, we got to go looking for you. No, Come on. you can't be full of the Spirit. You can't have a fruit. You, 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 the Spirit of God can't.